Hello guys, welcome back to Life of Clay for another sculpting video. Kenji here your sculptor and this time, I will be sculpting the Guti Sapphire Ornamental Tarantula, Solatheria Metallica. But before we begin, please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet and turn on the notification bell icon right next to it so you don't miss out any of my future videos. So without wasting more time, come bring the clay on and let's meet our blue wood and blue tarantula. I first draw a quick sketch of our P Metallica to observe its external anatomy. And let's build its armature starting with its abdomen by forming an aluminum foil into densely compact oval shaped ball. Poking its one end and insert an aluminum wire adding epoxy on it to keep it in place. And we can now begin sculpting its opistosoma or its abdomen. Cover it with a thin sheet of clay and shape it. Adding details on its ventral including the posterior and anterior book lungs, epigastric furrow, and the location of its spinnerets. Tarantula's book lungs are their respiration organ that resembles a folded book and oxygen is diffused between these pages, which are called lamellae. And breathing with book lungs generates greater water loss than using the kind of lungs mammals have. That's why it is very important for the hobbyists to keep the humidity levels of their tarantula enclosures high enough. The epigastric furrow is an opening between the set of book lungs closest to the cephalothorax, and this part is what tarantula keepers and breeders method in determining the genders of their tarantulas. Now I add fur texture around it. The Guti Sapphire Ornamental Tarantula is native in Andhra Pradesh in India and it is the only blue species of the genus Solotheria. Solotheria metallica belongs to the Old World Tarantula and an arboreal one, meaning that these animals species are tree-dwelling in nature. The genus name Solotheria is a combination of the ancient Greek poikilos meaning spotted and therion meaning wild beast. Then I added shallow poke holes on the area where the spinnerets are situated. And of course, my signature technique, poking lots of holes around it using a very small needle. And after that, cure it with heat gun. Now let's proceed in sculpting its prosoma. Cut the excess wire, apply epoxy, and wrap it with aluminum foil and bulk it up. I first pre-cover it with a hard type of clay to have a good foundation and guide in shaping it later. Then I cure it using heat gun. And after that, I apply liquid polymer clay on the top side and cover it with clay and start shaping its carapace basic shape based on the reference. Then adding those shallow grooves on its surface. And you know what? An adult P. metallica can grow up to a leg span of 6 to 8 inches. Female of this species can live for up to 11 to 12 years, unlike the male which has only 3 to 4 years of lifespan. P. metallica tarantula is now critically endangered because of logging and firewood harvesting that rapidly degrading their natural habitat, this combined with international pet trade. However, tarantula enthusiasts successfully bred this species in captivity and considered as a gem more than a biological specimen. Spiderling's price is typically between 100 to 200 US dollars and sometimes priced above 500 US dollars. Of course, the price influenced by the tarantula's gender. Then creating sockets on the front of the head for its calisserie, which are to be added later. Then shaping its carapace sides as preparation for the coxae and trochanters. Then adding small pieces of clay on the area where the eyes are grouped together to form that tiny hump and embed these tiny pre-baked polymer balls. 
Ornamental tarantulas are highly light sensitive. Yes, they are nocturnal and crepuscular hunters which come out to forage in dusk and dawn, and they are ambush predators. Let us now continue sculpting its ventral, applying liquid polymer clay and attached thin shade of clay for its sternum. We can now add all the coxae, the first joint near its body, out of these cut pieces of clay, shaping them one by one based on the reference. Brush it with a little amount of alcohol and poke shallow holes on each trochanter. And after that, bake it in the oven to cure. Next is sculpting its chalicerae. Apply liquid polymer clay on the sockets and attaching two pieces of bean shape of clay, shaping them based on the reference. Adding narrow grooves underneath them and this is where I attach the fangs later. Then I add fur texture and poke holes around them. Then after that, cure it with heat gun. Next, sculpting its spinnerets by covering a small gauge of bronze wire with a small strip of clay. Shape them and add their segments. And for its fangs, I shape two small pieces of clay into conical spike and slightly curve them. Solatheria metallicas are very aggressive and skittish spider and bite only on provoking. There has never been recorded human death from its bite. Still worrisome with those three quarter of an inch size of fangs penetrating the skin. However, its bite is considered medically significant for their venom can cause intense pain heart rate increase followed by sweating, headache, stinging, cramping, or swelling that can last for a week. We can now begin sculpting the pedipalps and the legs using 1mm stainless steel wires that I mark and then bend it. And I drill those shallow holes I made on its trochanter and anus area. Then checking all the wires on how to position them. Wrap around cotton twines on each wire and saturate them with the resin. And then set them aside to cure. First, sculpting its pair of pedipalps, those short modified legs on both sides of its skeletal array. Cover the wire with a strip of clay and shape it. Then I add its fur texture and its segments. Then poke holes around it. Next, sculpting the legs. Same procedure is applied. Cover the wire with a strip of clay and shape it based on the reference. Slightly flatten the tip part of the leg considering the broad and flat metatarsus and tarsus which the tarantula uses in climbing different surface. Then add each segment separating each part of the leg including the trochanter, femur, patella, tibia, metatarsus, tarsus, and claws. Adding fur texture and poke holes around it. And after that, bake them in the oven to cure. 
I made some adjustment because I noticed that the trochanters I made are a bit shorter and so I decided to extend them a little by applying liquid polymer clay and add small pieces of clay on each of the trochanter and shape them. Then poke those holes again and cure it after. And also a friend of mine on Facebook, a tarantula hobby is named Anne, enlightened me that arboreal and terrestrial tarantula's abdomen are slightly different in shape. In this case, Gutisapper tarantula, as an arboreal spider, has a more oblong shape of opistosoma. So I fix it by sanding down each side of its abdomen a little bit, retexturing it using my mini hand grinder and add poke holes. Now that I'm done fixing it, we can now begin the painting stage. I first prime all the parts with deep blue of armored Komodo paint using airbrush. Then I paint some parts of the sculpture with a mix of black and blue paint diluted into wash. This will add depth to the segments and crevices. Then painting all those white patterns on the legs and on the pedipalps. And for the next painting progress, I will be adding all the paints I use in the subtitle and do less talking so you can enjoy the painting stage as we go on. Or just check them out in the description box of this video for the complete list. And this whole genus exhibits an intricate fractal-like pattern on the abdomen that makes them easily recognizable. Now I'm done painting it, we can now attach its fangs and its spinnerets. And we can now start planting its hairs. And yes, the painstaking part of this sculpture is planting its every single hair. I started with the body and followed by its legs and body palms. I dip the one end of each hair in clear water-based glue and insert it to those poke holes I made earlier. And by the way, I know you will going to ask me what are these hairs made of. These are trimmed bristles of a painting brush that I tinted with blue coloring.
and yes, after a decade, finally finished planting all its hairs. And then seal it with ultra matte varnish mixed with satin one and gloss varnish goes to its eyes and fangs. Let us now assemble it. I use cyanoglue in attaching all its appendages. I carefully check the elevation of its body from the ground by adjusting each leg just before the glue cures. And for the final touch, I add fine synthetic fur on the side of its carapace to add fuzzy effect. Okay, so that's it. Our Pistolotheria Metallica or Guti Sapphire Ornamental Tarantula is now finally done. This is the third tarantula sculpture I made and I hope you like it and enjoy the whole process. Please give it a like, leave your comment, and share it with your friend and I will greatly appreciate that. And also don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell icon right next to it so you don't miss out any of my upcoming videos. Thank you again for watching and see you again next time. Keep safe and have a great day everyone.